What's up everyone? Got another Google versus Apple comparison video for you today. So last time we looked at Google Maps versus Apple Maps. This time what we're going to do is look at something that probably a lot of you use on a daily basis and that's going to be email. That's right. We're talking Gmail versus Apple Mail. And I'm also going to include a third option in here because a lot of people, myself included, use Outlook for work. So I'm going to include Outlook as an option and we'll be comparing these three different choices. We're going to be comparing these apps in five different categories. Number one, appearance. Number two, usability. Number three, integration. Number four, features. And number five, security or privacy. But before we actually get into these apps, there's one really important thing that we need to go over, which could muddy the waters quite a bit. And that's the difference between an email client and an email provider. An email client is the actual app or piece of software that you use to manage your email. Whether that's organizing your inbox, typing out your emails, or constantly deleting all that spam from one random form that you filled out on the internet over three years ago. Now an email service is the actual provider that is doing the sending and the receiving of the emails. You'll see this, what provider people are using, by typically the domain name. So Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, or if you're kind of old like me, you remember back when everybody had the AOL.com, right? So as an email service or provider, there really isn't a debate here because according to realsender.com, every single country that they have on record other than China, Gmail is the number one email service provider. Specifically in the US, Gmail is the provider for 42% of all emails out there. This is followed by Yahoo at 15% and then Hotmail all the way down at 5%. And since Gmail is the undisputed king of email service providers, we're just going to completely ignore this topic going forward and we're just going to be strictly talking about the apps. So for each category, I'm going to give the winner five points, I'm going to give the middle three points, and I'm going to give the loser one point. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get into it. All right, first up, appearance. So for Gmail, on the browser, there's tons of different theme options to choose from. And on the phone apps, there's no themes, but there are different colors throughout the UI so it isn't totally monotone. That's where Apple Mail completely fails, is there's really no coloration or theme options at all. Everything is white and gray with minimal blue buttons, nothing to catch your eye at all. As far as Outlook, there's different color theme options throughout all different formats, whether you're on the browser, your computer app, the phone apps, the sender icons have different colors to identify them. There's just a ton of different customization options here. And so as far as appearance goes, we're going to be giving Outlook five points, we'll give Gmail three points, and we'll give Apple Mail one point. For usability, for Gmail, it's a very straightforward app. There's a lot of different settings to customize, but it's pretty easy to understand. You can add external accounts, but it isn't very straightforward to do that. There is a weird Gmailify option that makes external accounts function like a Gmail account, but honestly, I still haven't quite figured out that whole process or what that actually means. The attachment management is relatively simple and any email threads that have attachments are all shown on the main inbox screen. For Apple Mail, there's very little customization available. What you see is what you get for the most part. Now probably the biggest downside with Apple Mail is that when connecting a Gmail or an external account, it's not actually able to instantly refresh whenever you get an email. It can only be fetched, which is limited to every 15 minutes. So if you just have your phone in your pocket, you're not going to get a notification that you have a new email until that fetching happens every 15 minutes. Or if you go into the app and actually pull down and hit refresh, then it will pop up at that point too. And inside the app, attachments, they're not broken out separately from an email. They're basically automatically opened and they're in line with all of the emails. So it can get really difficult to actually see what's an attachment and what's part of the email. As far as Outlook goes, there's a lot of settings available to customize. You can make it work how you want to make it work. Attachments are all extremely clear, kept separate from the content in the actual emails, and you can add external accounts easily. On this one, I'm kind of torn between Gmail and Outlook, but I'm going to give five points to Gmail, I'm going to give three points to Outlook, and I'm going to give one point to Apple Mail. Okay, the next category, integration. So Gmail, they do not have a dedicated app on either macOS or even PC. They're only browser-based. They do have apps for your portable devices, such as your smartphones or iPads or tablets, 
but you're very limited to what settings and customization you can do inside of those apps. On the browser, you have the ability to view your calendar via a taskbar on the right side of the inbox, which makes linking those services together pretty smooth, and I really like that. As far as Apple Mail, there is very similar functionality across all the Apple devices for a consistent experience, but again, you're just limited to Apple devices. As far as Outlook goes, one of the great features that I really like about this one is it has a built-in calendar directly in the app that's integrated into the same app, whether you're on PC, Mac OS, Android, iOS, iPad OS, literally any device. If you have the app, you have the calendar and the email all together, and it's fantastic. So if you're looking to have the same experience regardless of what device you're using, this is the best choice by far. I'm gonna give Outlook five points, I'm gonna give Gmail three points, and Apple Mail yet again, rounding out the bottom with one point. As far as features go, on the other hand, starting with Gmail, there are external extensions available to customize your experience even further. For Apple Mail, one of the cool features that I really like is the two-factor authentication, the code reading, meaning if you get an email with a two-factor authentication code, it'll just populate it directly into that form field without you actually having to open up the Mail app. You can schedule emails, you can undo send up to 15 seconds after sending, you can do rich text formatting, meaning colors, bold, HTML, etc. You can do pretty much anything. You can mark up and edit attachments prior to sending directly from the Mail app, which is pretty slick. And there's also a quick view or pop-up menu option when pushing and holding on an email, so you don't actually have to go into the full email to find whatever button you're looking for. As far as Outlook goes, what I really like is that they will actually remind you if you forgot to attach something, which is hugely useful. I can't tell you how many times I've done that. Uh, there is a focused inbox which attempts to separate actual emails from promotions and spam, etc. But I don't really use that as I've found that it sometimes just filters things that I actually want to see in the other tab, but it's like an important email. So I pretty much just turn that feature off altogether. Another thing is you can actually create events and meetings directly from the Outlook app. And that's because, well, the calendar is integrated completely with the Outlook app itself. So for features, I'm actually going to give Apple Mail five points. I'm going to give Gmail three points. And I'm going to give Outlook one point, even though they do have some decent features. There's just not a huge list of them. So now for the fifth category, privacy. Starting with Gmail again, you can set your confidentiality settings per email, which can control who has the ability to actually forward emails, and it'll set a lifespan for an email if you so choose, meaning it will not be accessible after that time. You can snooze emails, which removes them from your inbox temporarily, and then we'll bring it back and notify you again later. You can translate emails directly in the viewer, which is pretty slick, and you can unsend or recall emails after 30 seconds. As far as Apple Mail goes, they have a few features here called Hide My Email, which creates a false email address, and then it will forward the content to your actual email. They have Mail Privacy Protection, which hides read receipts and viewing activity. For Outlook, similar to Gmail, you can set confidentiality settings per email, which can control who has the ability to forward them and set the lifespan. You can selectively encrypt emails, which users will need a passcode to open. But other than this, I've had a pretty difficult time figuring out actually what privacy features are included in Outlook. Uh, maybe it's just the Office 365 suite as a whole that's providing the privacy, but I can't really find any details on the actual features of Outlook. So for this one, I'm going to give Apple Mail five points. I'm going to give Gmail three points. And I'm going to give Outlook one point, mostly just because I couldn't find anything about what it does. So that was a lot of technical details, but what does that all actually equate to? So we have Apple Mail rounding out the bottom with 13 points. We have Outlook coming in second with 15 points. And then we have Gmail taking the crown with 17 points. Granted, with all that said, if you are specifically an Apple user, then I would have to give that category to Apple, meaning that Apple Mail would actually be the winner of the points for an Apple user. Now that's probably a given, but I do have to say that the Apple Mail app is just so frustrating at times. And even though it has a long list of features and cool stuff, it's just bland and it's not exciting to use. So for me personally, even though I am exclusively on the Apple ecosystem, I choose to use Gmail for my day-to-day -day email services on my personal device. And then I use Outlook, like I said, on my work device because, well, we have to because we're on the Office 365 suite. And also another caveat to everything that we're talking about here 
is WWDC 24 just happened on June 10th, and Apple teased, kind of released, but mostly just teased a new Apple Mail app that does a lot of the things that Gmail does with on-device automatic uh, categorization of different emails, including a primary inbox, transactions, updates, promotions, things like that. And each of those different categories has a different color associated with it. So it's no longer just everything blue, white, and gray. And it does these other features too. So there's a good chance that Apple Mail might actually come out on top once this new version of Apple Mail is released in, later in the fall. Only time will tell, and we'll have to do a review of that when it comes out. But until then, check out this video that I did comparing what Google services are actually better than Apple services on iPhones. If that's you, be sure to check that one out. Until next time, peace.